Now that we've defined some of these key quantities, we can move on to start talking about potential flow theory. And there's two types of functional ways of representing a flow field using gradients. And understanding the similarities and differences between these is important to being able to move forward with potential flow theory. So these are called the stream function and the velocity potential, from which the name potential flow theory is derived. And this is section 2.14 and 2.15 in your textbook. All right, so consider a 2D steady flow. Now, the equation then for a streamline, I'll illustrate this in a moment to help you see what I mean. Equation for a streamline dy dx is v over u. Now, v is the vertical or y component of velocity, and x is the horizontal, or, or sorry, and u is the horizontal or x component of velocity. So here's our x y coordinate system. Right, so if we have a streamline, remember that everywhere. This is tangent to the velocity, and so if this is the velocity capital V, it has components V and U. And so the local slope of the streamline dy dx is simply the ratio of these two quantities. Now, in general, you could integrate this equation to get that there's some function of x and y equal to a constant. So you can say this is the equation of a streamline. Now I know that sounds a bit strange. But bear with me a moment. Now we define capital Psi bar to be equal to this function f. This function f. So that Psi bar of x and y equals a constant. And we call this the stream function because it's the equation of the streamlines. And for this constant, well, different constant means you're on a different streamline. Now, if you think about it, for an incompressible flow, actually, it doesn't matter if the flow is incompressible or not. We'll come to that a bit later. Regardless, for a 2D steady flow, the mass flow rate per unit depth is by definition the change in the stream function between two streamlines. You can essentially see this because if I have another streamline here, the sort of integral of all the, the streamlines between them will give the volume flow rate in between them. Now, based on this, we can see there's a really important property of this function, which is that rho times u is 
the y partial derivative and rho times v is the negative of the x partial derivative. This is all discussed in much greater detail in the text, and I recommend that you take the time to read it. But what this says is that you can get the velocity field from the stream function just by differentiating it. Now this is true for both compressible and incompressible flow. Now before we can go further, now we're going to have to restrict ourselves to incompressible flow. And we'll define psi, so we'll drop the bar to be psi bar over rho in incompressible flow. So then, the x velocity is just d psi dy, and the y velocity is negative d psi dx. So now it's even more direct. We don't have to worry about the density. We have this function. We take the derivative, and we have the velocity field. And then if this is the form we're using, this incompressible formulation of the stream function, then delta psi is a volume flow rate between streamlines C1 and C2, which correspond to two values of the constant. And again, of course, since this is 2D, it's per unit depth. Okay. So that's the stream function. And we'll see sometimes it's convenient to use that. And sometimes it's convenient to use something similar called the velocity potential. Now, in an irrotational flow, where the vorticity, which again is the curl of the velocity vector, is zero, then we can take advantage of a vector identity. So this just comes from math. for any scalar field, say psi, uh, phi, is it grad cross grad phi equals zero. So this identity looks a lot like this equation for irrotational flow. In particular, if we replace velocity with grad phi, then what we have is exactly the same equation. And so we can say in an irrotational flow, the velocity vector equals grad phi. And we define this value phi as being the velocity potential. And this is a function of space. And here we're not restricted to 2D. This works just as well in three dimensions. Now, if you think about this, what this means is that the x velocity u is d phi dx, 
the y velocity v is d phi dy. And now we'll define the z velocity w equals d phi dz. So this is really easy to remember. The partial derivative of the velocity potential in each direction gives the velocity in that direction. So to summarize the differences between these two concepts, we can put this together in a little table. So we've got the stream function psi and the potential phi. And if we make a table, the stream function can only be used in 2D, but the velocity potential can be used in 2D or in 3D. The stream function can be defined in rotational flows, but you can't define a velocity potential in a rotational flow. So in an irrotational flow, again, we only need to determine this velocity potential to get the velocity field. So what we do is call flows where we can apply this. So if we have an irrotational steady flow, that's what we call a potential flow. And one thing that is really important about these two types of functions is that the lines of constant potential and the lines of constant stream function are perpendicular. will come in handy occasionally.